I don't like that call. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. If I'm going to develop my calling, the next thing is I got to expect God to send somebody to be my mentor. God will send somebody your way to be your mentor. <clears throat> now, here's the thing about mentors. If God sent you to a mentor, that means that God wants you to listen and not speak. <laughs> I, I, found that, I found that the many people, when they find a mentor, they try to tell a mentor what to do. Well, you know, I think you ought to do this. Well, didn't you say that God sent you my way for me to mentor you? Amen. And see, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12 says, Follow them who through faith and patience have inherited the promises. Amen. So God places us in positions to be mentored by other people who, are, who have the same calling as we. Now, what would it look like for me to go before Dr. Frederick Casey Price and tell him, you know one thing about faith, Pastor? I want to talk to you about faith. Now, he the godfather of faith. But here God placed me in a position to be mentored by this man, and I'm going to tell him what to do. That don't make no sense. Been in ministry for 55 years. And I'm going to tell him, well, you know, Dr. Price, I think you ought to do this. <laughs> no. He look at me like, young man, who are you? <laughs> no. God, no. You know, God will place mentors in our path. Now, that, and that's a great thing, man, I tell you. Because, watch this now. I can accelerate the call on my life by looking at the example, the good and the bad, from my mentors. See, you really cannot mentor unless you're willing to share both sides of it. Amen. See, you're not qualified to mentor if you want to tell everybody the good stuff and just the good stuff. Amen. See, there are some challenges that you go through in life that you overcome, but if you leave those out, you're not truly mentoring. Amen. Now, now and I believe that God is lining each of you up to mentor somebody else. Whether it's in your family or in the, in the world. Amen. So if I'm going to develop my calling, i got to find me a mentor. Somebody, somebody that, that, uh, that I can look up to. Amen. And, uh, and respect. Praise the Lord. And then if I'm going to develop my calling, I have to anticipate God moving quickly to complete his assignment in my life. Amen. God talks about finishing the work that he's assigned you. Yeah, he's going to move quickly on that thing. He, he's not going to delay. And thank God Paul said, I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. I've done what God told me to do. Now I'm through. <laughs> Amen. God, God, God moved quickly. Now, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Here's some other things that, that go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. If you're going to answer the call, or be, better yet, when you answer the call, here's one thing. You might have to encourage yourself. 1 Samuel chapter 30. See, there are times when I just encourage myself. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Answering the call, you got to encourage yourself because sometimes folk don't want to encourage you. They, I mean, they, they don't. They, they, you know, they hate us. They just they hate us. I mean, the haters don't want to encourage you. They so jealous about what God is doing through you that they don't have time to be encouraging you because they don't, they don't like you no more. The moment you accept your call and what the assignment of God has called you to do, the haters will show up. And guess what? The haters are not always the ones outside the church. Some of the haters are in the church. There's no haters in this church, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ain't no haters at Faith Christians in the church. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about in the body of Christ. Amen. Because when, when one rejoice, we all rejoice. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Look at verse number 6. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse number 6. And David was greatly distressed, 
for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Sometimes with the call that God has placed on your life, you just simply have to encourage yourself. Say, I'm going to do my assignment to the best of my ability. I'm just going to encourage myself. Praise the Lord. Amen. And look, look, even if the pastor don't see what you're doing. See, because everybody, everybody, you know, everybody want me to see everything. I, look, I, I just can't. I got two eyes. I can't see everything. But God still sees it. Okay? So if I don't recognize it, God recognizes it. And so just go ahead and encourage yourself that God is pleased with you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Next thing is, don't allow anybody to talk you out of your expectation or talk you out of your calling. You remember blind Bartimaeus? He heard that Jesus was coming by and he needed his healing. And he began to shout out, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And the folk around him was telling him to shut up. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. You don't need no healing today. Well, all of them could see. Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, Bartimaeus. You're too loud in church. And he said, man, how many fingers I got up? He said, you see how many I got up? I can't. <laughs> Jesus, our son of David, have mercy on me. He said, oh, oh the, the, everybody stop. Somebody's calling. Bring him here. And then watch this now. When Jesus said, bring him to me, they say, hey, man, Jesus calling you. <laughs> the same ones that was telling him to be quiet. They were like, yeah, Jesus calling you, man. Now I'm like, get your hands off me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You got to get around folk who can get into agreement with you. Amen. Get, it, get around folk. When, 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 uh, when Mary uh, was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, she couldn't go to Shaquita and tell Shaquita, guess what just happened to me? I was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. Because Shaquita would have said, girl, you better get out of here. You, what you overshadow you, girl. You better get you a man. <laughs> Say, but no, no, I'm telling you the truth. The Holy Ghost came and overshadowed me, and now I'm, I'm pregnant. Girl, don't tell Joe that. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph ain't going to believe that one. But I have not been with a man, girl, don't. And you pregnant? She had to go to Elizabeth, somebody that could get into agreement with her. See, you know it's the right person when what you say causes them to leap on the inside. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, see, when you find somebody... That's not into agreement. Oh, that ain't nothing, girl. They not in agreement with you. Amen. So I got to, don't allow anybody to talk about my expectation. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Amen. I got to avoid the haters. I want to just show you this scripture. Avoid the haters. <laughs> 